Can't get any further down the ground than that. Loon goes high, can't mark. Richie in the engine room. Kicks now to centre half forward, but again, who too? Proctor. Just, oh, oh, just does it so, so easily. Goes out to the wing, out to Strickland. Scott should be his man. Strickland's though all alone. Kicks down to uh, Ahern, but a good mark taken by the Roos. And over the back was Fry. He goes on with it. Wobbly old kick. Todman. Wade in there about to pounce. McCallum dives on the footy. Oh, and over the line again. It's pretty desperate stuff in this third quarter because they realise that if they can get a break now, North Launceston, it's going to make it just so difficult for the Roos to get back into the game. 19 minutes gone in the third quarter. Fry to Hearn. McCallum pumps it forward. Hawkins in the way, though. His kick smothered and it falls to Stevie Wright. Little chip pass is OK to Adams. Break him up, that's the way. Nothing on offer for him down the field. Although, Cullen's run up from half back and he's thumped by Davies. Free kick, surely. And 50. So, certain goal coming up to Clarence. Well, yeah, look, it was nearly in the in the actual uh, play, wasn't it? But uh, I think the reason the 50 is that the umpire's technically correct. The bloke did make the player his object, even though it was uh, basically at the same time the ball arrived. Well, he certainly had marked the football, and uh, for mine, that Reese Jones has let Cullen run down the field a couple of times. Called it earlier. They really do need to get the next goal if they're going to be in with a chance of having any hope come three-quarter time. We seem to be saying this all the time, Dave. We're, we're basically going around in circles here that North answer, and we're yes. saying Clarence have to do this. And if this if this continues any longer, well, uh, I expect North Launceston to be uh, the 1993 Premiers because Clarence just cannot continue to get the odd goal. Three goals apiece between both teams in this uh, third quarter. Six to seven in the second quarter, so you can see it's been a pretty pretty even two quarters of football. Winter does it well. Out towards Adams, who marks well. Well, Adams up on the forward line, starting to get back into the game. Kicks to Richards. He's got spring heels. Hasn't got sticky hands. It goes through them. Spearman. Short and does it well to Olds. Olds has a look, and who does he kick it to? Cullen. Winter. Walking round a couple. Having a look, but there's not a lot of movement up on the forward line. Bug's going to try for the big one. Can't do it. Hawkins to Proctor, the big fellow, can he mark it? He can't, at ground level, Todman handballs out well to Reese jones good centering handball to Olds another good one to Strickland Strickland can run bombs away from 55 metres terrific kick from Strickland just touched on the line, Johnston he's been quiet since the first quarter tunnel ball style Holdenoff doesn't know what's got hold of him Wade does, he's got the footy and the handballs it out to Hull, who clears, and that was a frenetic piece of play. <laughs> and the Roos get out of it well. It was a desperate piece of play, and full credit to the two Clarence blokes down there, because they uh, they uh, were right under the pump then. Todman's got to try and beat Hurd. And we'll have another boundary throw in. But the ball just kept moving for about two minutes, and it went from one end to the other, then back again. 12-5 to 14-11. Robbins in command here by about three goals, but 21 minute mark of the third quarter. And the free kick here is going Johnny Cullen's way for a throw. Off the screen, Rob, we've got Andrew Scott Senior down in the forward pocket after being uh, a naughty lad in the back half. I think it's a good move. Him. He's got to be productive and he has got the ability to play in the forward line. Duncan Hurd on centre wing. Adams and Ritchie. And Adams gets well away from Proctor. Certainly got the pace advantage there. Now put it out in front of Richards. He has got it. He's finally marked one in this third quarter. Kick three in the first half. And it was a lovely little kick. Not a bad mark. Great mark. Really needs to deliberate it over it now. And uh, he's going to kick into a bit of a slight breeze. The breeze is going across, across his body. Very, very important kick as we approach time on. It'll bring the margin back to two goals if he kicks this. Mark Richards. For goal number four. He lays back on it. It's a beautiful kick, an excellent result. And they're back within two goals. Well, they didn't allow North Launceston to get one. 
They need the centre clear to really set them up again as we approach time on. There's probably only about six minutes left in this third quarter of footy. They want to be a little bit closer by three-quarter time if they're going to be in with a show in the last 30 minutes. North Lancers haven't wasted any time. They've taken Proctor off the ground because Adams has uh, led him for a merry dance in about the last seven or eight minutes. And Scott Adams is one player that can have enormous influence on this game one way or the other. Smith on to Adams. The Hearn with the tap. The Robins trying to answer it. They're not going to straight away anyway because Winter gets the kick. It's a quick one. Strickland, he's being held, hasn't got the footy, and he's got a free kick. So the players stop momentarily as the ball comes back to Michael Strickland. The crowd can sense that the Roos could get even closer before three-quarter time. We're about a minute away from the uh, time on period. The kick, not a good one. Fry takes the mark. And Stephen Fry just standing, hands in the air. He wants to get on with it. Handballs to Wade. Wade to centre wing. Kick to kick. Who's got it? Strickland. A couple of leads in short. Mark taken by Owls. Stop start. They uh, want to move it. No doubt North Launceston Forge want that to happen. Get it up there quickly. Gibson coming into position. So to Oldenhoff. Brownless is appealing for the mark and he's got it. Or he's got the free kick. One of the two. But there's no doubt that he's got the footy. Here's Bug, out wide towards McCallum in space. Kick up towards the leading Scott. He's got to beat that uh, tireless defender, Davies. Courageous effort there from Lynch. Davies is held. And the free kick will go to North Launceston. Gee, he's been reliable all day, hasn't he? Had a marvellous final series. Probably the player of the finals, Craig Davies. Kicks to centre-half forward, looking for Gibson. Knocked away from him. And Stevie Wright burrows through. Good stuff from uh, Young Holmes. A fry. Good hands. Hand pass over to right. McCallum's out wide. Holdsworth off the hospital hand pass. Holdsworth gets shepherded. Thumps it forward towards Ritchie, who's outmaneuvered by Ash Beerman. Adams! They're within a goal! Well, they worked it forward, worked it forward, persisted, persisted, got it into the goal square, and Scotty Adams. There's been some terrific moves, mate. Look, Peter Ritchie worked his backside off in this corner. It's been fantastic. He's been moved down to the forward line. Got a little bit of a knock on. Adams, as we said, lifted, has lifted. And basically, you saw Stephen Wright set that up with some quick hands. And, uh, boy, gee, we've got a game on our hands now. Been some good coaching, uh, Robbie, from both uh, benches, hasn't there? I think it's been terrific from both benches, yep. The Hearn gets the tap. Can the Robins get back? They're a goal in front. The Roos coming home with a wet sail at the end of this third quarter. Cullen copped one high. The play goes on. Smith in front can't mark it. But there's Mr. Reliable. Davies mops up any trouble from half back and goes out wide to Reese Jones. Well, Reese Jones decides to handball to Johnston. Johnston from centre wing kicks long to centre half four. The Hearn goes high. Holdenoff, the handball comes out now to Strickland. Goes in short. He was looking for Gibson. The minor score, seven points the difference. One goal, four for Michael Strickland. He's been lively. He's playing a little further up the field this quarter too. He's taken a number, mate, had a number of possessions across the midfield line. Spent the majority of the first half in the goal score. Clarence going a bit quicker. Young Williams back onto a forward pocket. Andrew Scott off the ground. Smith playing on Adams. Spearman in the pocket on Ritchie. And Wright getting into it. And suddenly things opening up for Clarence. Stephen Fry might bomb it in long. Richie's in pretty good position. He's being held. Open goal. McCallum. They're within a goal. I thought Richie should have got the free kick. The up he let it go. And McCallum has got them to the closest they have been since the first quarter. And they are on a roll. Yeah. Stephen Wright's the man. There's no doubt about that. The captain coach has really lifted this team. And uh, he's got them going in the middle of the field. And everything falls into place after that. I think one of the important things with uh, Stevie Wright, Jury, is that he hasn't wasted a position. He's held onto the ball long enough to size it up, pick the best option, give it off when he needed to give it off. On that occasion, when he gave it across to Fry, he waited it nicely. I tell you, he's been an uh, impressive player in this third quarter, fellas. Johnny Cullen done a few good things. 17 possessions to the man we were talking about, Stevie Wright. Lynch can't grab the footy of the Roos, going to get the lead. Here's Adams from centre half forward kicks and levels the score. Only a couple of minutes to go in the quarter. We're well and truly into time on, but they've just grown an extra leg over the last six or seven minutes. We were calling.
Wouldn't to get two goals in a row if they were going to be with a chance of uh, being closer to the score of three. What a time. Well, they've certainly done that and more. Well, Flonceston, six extra scoring shots, but scores 96 apiece. Just about to mention that. 15-6 to 14-12. Big difference. And Winter has been good in this third quarter. Rides all on his own in the pocket. If he hurries, he's missed the opportunity. Richie's in short. He decides to go long. Richards. He's got it. He's taken the mark. Well, what a withering burst this has been from Clarence. And Mark Richards, the young full forward, he's been very competitive all year, has never really kicked a bag of goals. He seems to snare three or four, quite an unselfish player, and in the past has been an inaccurate kick. But what about his efforts today? Four goals straight. And he's kicked three of those from very strong marks. If he kicks this, it'll be four out of five. Five kicks, four goals. 96 all. They're a goal in front, the Roos. They've kicked the last four. And this big crowd with a heap of Clarence supporters here and out going absolutely bananas might be enough to urge them home. Kicked seven to four in this quarter of football, so it's been a fantastic third quarter for them. They say premierships are one in the third quarter, Shorey. They're going about it the right way at the moment. The thing I asked you about a quarter and a half ago, Dave, it just sticks in my mind a little bit. I just thought the likes of Crimmer State with their socks down, Young Olds has gone out of the game, Todman's gone out of the game, and those blokes who are having a huge influence on the game early have just disappeared, and uh, that's the area I question their running fitness over the full course of the game. Well, Cooney and Wright and Hurd have certainly lifted in this quarter. So the Roos, six points clear. Not over till the fat lady sings, though, as they say. Another 30 minutes to go the Robins now to go into attack. Where'd you hear that one from? Well, it's a new one. I just brought it out of the bag, Rob. You might hear a few more before the end of the day as well. <laughs> the Robins in attack. Well, oh, Johnson really launched himself then on his opponent. And there's quarter to three-quarter time, and the Roos have got the streamers waving frantically. Well, they can be well pleased with that quarter because they controlled it to go into the last break in season 93. Clear by one goal. 16-6. To 14 12. Well, fellas, I think this is the best game of statewide league football I've seen. There you go. If you go back to 1990, Rob, the scores were level at three quarter time, and Hobart ran away and won by 54 points over a very tired North Launceston. Sure, he's been talking about tired legs. They've had a fairly hectic campaign over the final series. People have argued that one game in three weeks wouldn't do the cause of Clarence much good. Really, the side that really wants to go about and take it away from here, it's really up to them. Get it out of the centre. Keep some running system going across the midfield. Forwards play in front. You're going to be in with a big show. Well, they've up the ante, haven't they, in all areas? And, uh, oh, well, both clubs are sitting down. Uh, Reese is uh, into them straight away, really appealing for them. He looks to be in control. Rob, if you were the coach now, you're in Reese Jones's position. What would you be saying to uh, North uh, Launceston? Well, it's, a very, it's one of the worst positions to be in because you've controlled the game all day and in a 15-minute period, you're behind. They haven't played poorly. Clarence have been magnificent in that period of time. And really, it's, uh, it's a 15-minute period that's just disappeared and you have, as the coach, you've got a huge responsibility because you've got to control the situation now. OK, well, a three-quarter time. What a setup. 16-6, 102. North Launceston, 14, 12, 96. Here's Karen Ty. Ah, she's right, Mark's locked the TV at home. Yep, it's fine. Okay, it's three quarter time here, 16 6 102. Clarence, North Launceston, 14 goals, 12 96. And what a spectacular day it's been. That's the view from our cherry picker camera. And it's just a marvellous sight here at North Hobart because the ground is, it's not absolutely packed to capacity, but there'd be 14 or 15,000 fans here. 
and they would have appreciated what a marvelous spectacle this game's been and interestingly enough it's not over yet the robins have held sway for most of the day but emotionally charged clarence hit back in that third turn interesting to have a look at the respective camps stevie wright doing uh, all the talking for clarence not so on the robins camp gary stan reed the uh, the reserves coach was doing the talking at uh, three-quarter time obviously reese jones was with ronald wigan trying to work out something with the uh, the player placement board Wright's pretty well involved with it all. Here's Reese Jones. You can see the board there. They've made a few shuffles. You recall this time last week, they made a couple of significant moves. Chuck went to full forward, kicked a couple. Reese Jones went into the centre square and certainly picked up his bit. And uh, he really he really needs to lead from the front, I feel. Cullen has done an exceptional job on him. He's been running off him all the time. He's squirreled when he's needed to. He's gone for his marks when he thought he could. Reese Jones maybe needs to get into the action and start to lift from the centre bounce, as we saw him do in the first quarter of football. David Reese jones urging up the troops there. It's just a contrast in styles, isn't it? The, the, the classy uh, six-foot player, the, 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 the medalist in the grand final, who's done a terrific job, and the real nuggety little guy with the man with the big heart. He's really set him alight in the last 15 minutes, and I believe North Launceston can win this game, but it'll have to come from Reese. He'll have to match what, uh, in his own sort of way, he has to match what right he does. He can't match him as a rover, but his own sort of way, if he can get him going, he can have a huge influence. Old Knopf, really impressive. Gibson Lively, they've still got the ammunition to do it, but uh, Richards' is accurate kicking has been a huge influence on this game. You saw the goal kickers there. Richards kicking five for Clarence and Old Knopf three for North Launceston. What do the stats tell us, Gary? Well, it's very even, as you can see. It's taken uh, Clarence three quarters of football to hit the front. The stats reflect that in the way that everything is pretty well lined up as even. The three kicks going North Launceston's way. But... Uh, Really, six points in front. It's reflected in the way the stats have come up on the screen there now. OK, let's now go down to our boundary riders and let's firstly go to Peter Chisnell. Over to you, Chisner, in the North Launceston camp. Yes, David Rees jones he called the last 30 minutes of football. He said, this is 30 minutes worth dying for. He said, I'm prepared to die out here for you. He said, this is the quarter that's going to count. Let's give our supporters once and for all something to work for, something to think about for the rest of the year. I tell you what, they're pretty fired up out there. Real grand final atmosphere. Over to you, John. Well, out with Clarence, it was total teamwork and total cooperation. I have never seen a side that was so close together and so wrapped in each other. They kept talking about cooperation, and even Gavin Cooney was saying, I love you and I'm going to win for you. And I've never heard that said on a football field, <laughs> but my word, the Clarence players are confident. And we love you too, John Kenny, as the Robins are first into attack. And they need the first goal one suspects because momentum was against them in the late stages of the first quarter. Good hand pass from Brownless over the top to Hurd. Oh, he's beaten to it by Gibson. Well played and a beautiful little kick by Strickland. And that is a top individual effort. Yeah, class all the way there. Gibson really was in control of himself as well as the football. And Strickland, we've seen him spray shots a bit today, but... Uh... He's a very, very good kicker of the football. I wouldn't be surprised to see him kick it. Have a go at it, son. He's kicked one goal for advice from Gary Davidson and Robert Shaw. But fellas, he's kicked it behind. One five for Michael Strickland, who Robert described in the third quarter as being very, very lively. So one five, not good return for uh, picking up a lot of possessions in front of goal. Could have covered himself in glory, couldn't he? Four or five goals beside his name, as Richards has done, of course, at the other end. Bug kicks out and gets uh, plenty of distance into the kick to McCallum. McCallum has a quick boot down to the man who loves them all, Cooney. Jeff Fennick made that saying famous. Cooney might be the one to make it famous in Hobart. Down to the forward pocket comes the footy. Oh, good tackling then as on Hawkins. Comes out to Lynch. Lynch across to Loon. Loon has a look upfield. He's got good delivery. And that's no exception to Gibson. Oh, Gibbo. Oh, Gibbo, what have you done? Right. He was looking for Strickland, and on his left boot, it wasn't a good kick over the line on the full. Be unforgivable for a senior footballer at this level to kick it out in the full like that. And Hull uses it well, gets it to Johnny Cullen, who came to Clarence from Tokenwall. And kicks the half forward. In effort, Jones, and Adams has the ball trickling off his boot and over the line. Clarence have pulled the uh, North Launceston rather have pulled the same trick they did last week. They brought Adam Ahern down into the forward line and dragged their Ruckman away from the play. All right.
Mitchie in the forward pocket. Thorne hits the wall, didn't panic, or he did a bit, and then the kicks landed in the arms of McCallum. I don't know who that was meant for, but it slid off the side. McCallum will kick from 40. Well, he was under pressure. He didn't. He obviously wanted to go to the boundary, but uh, under pressure, the ball off the outside of the right boot, right into McCallum, who was back in the wall. And, uh, well, Strickland had his chance, and uh, the young fellow's got a chance at the other end of the ground. And uh, as so happened, happened, sorry. One team wastes the opportunity, and here he comes in now shooting for goal. Five points the difference. McCallum will make it six points the difference. If at all, has that been marked? No, over the line for a behind. He was so interested. Goal in it, Gary. Rob, just looking around the field when McCallum marked the ball, the hands of the North Launceston players went to their heads and they thought, oh no, not again. Away go North Launceston. Comes out to Smith. Smith's kick to Strickland. A good punch from Winter. Back to Smith. He can't find the handle. Over the line. He can play a bit old enough, I reckon. For a bloke that's been out for 10 weeks, I'm amazed at his game. He's still running there at centre half foot, as though he really wants the footing. The throw in. Reese Jones is in there in the ruck. He goes Davies. He's been a fine player for them on the back line. Wobbly old kick. Strickland and Winter. Winter just like a Toreador. Let uh, Strickland go past. Stood his ground and marked the footy. He's been a fine player for them too today, Dovo, hasn't he? 11 kicks. Not a bad effort for a uh, half back flanker. His kick to the centre. Adams goes high. Big punch though from Spearman to Hurd. Hurd's been a contributor all day. Adams has come into it in the second half to McCallum. McCallum's handball to Holdsworth. Holdsworth, quick kick. Not a bad one from Holdsworth. And what about the bounce? We'll wait on it. It's a goal. Holdsworth, he would have thought that somebody was smiling happily down on him because that's a fine goal and one that could break the heart of the North Launceston team. Well, isn't it interesting? Like, I just looked down here in front of us and there's Kremer in the, in the goal square looking very weary, played a fantastic first half and young McCallum, who we were critical of early in the game for not being involved, has been instrumental. As a, as a matter of fact, he's been fantastic in about the last 20 minutes of football. 109-97. Brian O'Hearn. Reese Jones is in the centre of the ground now. Can he do what he did last week when he inspired them to that great win over North Hobart? But Wright takes it out of the middle, gets it across towards Cullen. Do that lifted. Andrew Scott Jr., good kick. So is this bloke. This is the bloke that's got them back in the game in the third quarter after spending time in defence. Seven marks to Scotty Adams. Bombs it in long. Richards and Ritchie, the two R's, falls to Holdsworth for goal number four around the corner. It's close. Oh, he's dumped it. McClellan's going away now. Four goals to Paul Holdsworth. And the Roos are on their way to their first flag since 1984. Still a fair way to go yet, Rob. We saw it turn around that third quarter. I wouldn't be calling the winner just yet. We've only had about six or seven minutes. It's certainly been a great start for the last quarter. Holdsworth been pretty quiet all day. Had the job on Kremerskothen. Buck's gone back onto Kremerskothen in the goal square to allow Holdsworth a bit of a free reign around the middle of the ground. That's what he does best, playing around the centre of the ground. Well, you don't get many better goals than that either. He didn't see it. He didn't see the goal. It just snapped over his head from pretty well an impossible angle. So terrific goal, a team lifter from Holdsworth. Can the Robins do the same? The ball down on their half forward line. Gibson overruns it. Well, Winter on hands and knees. Back to Gibson. Who's there to help him? Nobody. He does it to Loon, but holding the ball. Gee, when this man starts to play footy, he's a very good player in tight circumstances. He's got terrific skills and, more importantly, great composure. So the calm one kicks it to the centre where Hurd's waiting. His kick, foot number 14, down to Ritchie. The Robins backs in the way. Lynch. Over to, Hurd, over to uh, Scott. That's Scott the Younger to Fry. Fry's handball to Williams. Can Williams get around? He can't. Good tackle from uh, Lynch on hands and knees. He runs after him. And the ball over the line and I think the players will be pretty happy about that because they really rushed in. Then McCallum just does a bit of shoving. Aren't they having a go at it, Wilco? It's fantastic. Terrific game of footy this one. 18-7 to 14-13. The Roos in the lead. Heard on Thorne. Umpire has decided to let it go. Rob, they've done exactly as they did last week. A Hearn's come down into that forward line. Reese Jones is doing the ruck work. Cullen's got to take A Hearn, and Fry will do the ruck work against Reese Jones. Reese Jones wins that one. Here's Loon. 
Cody was pushed off the kick and will have a boundary throw in in front of the temporary tents. You think they look a bit tight, Jory? Yeah, I do. I do. You know, I know it's easy to be smart after the event, but I did mention it and it was a concern to me, despite the fact that they were fair way in front. But they've got great spirit, North Launceston. Let's not forget that. They came from behind last week and they're moving forward to half forward. But this is where they're breaking down a bit now. Winter and Holm and Cullen have got completely on top. Holm bursts away, goes short and finds Gavin Cooney. Cooney in short. Oh, they're breaking down all over the place now, I think. And Clarence, the youngster, Williams, will kick for goal. Rob, over the years, that one of the pitfalls that North Launceston have fallen into is that they're not very good when the ball's turned over. They just don't man up quickly enough. And, of course, they've been cut apart in big games. And I take you back to that 1990 grand final. Scores leveled three-quarter times. They got rolled by nearly ten goals. This is an important kick from young Sean Williams. It's bending back. Not enough. One of the things that I've noticed, and I was really impressed with North Launceston's general kicking around the ground early and also their kicking for goal. But every